The healthcare detective Frank Lally has written a book for Simon & Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Healthcare Now, it is available online, in-store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade, the former editor of Money and George magazines. It sounds like a long list. Um, uh, what is he? He's also a senior advisor, or maybe perhaps the senior advisor to healthcare.com. And here he is. Hi, Frank. Ah, here I am. <laughs> and here you are. Here I am. Uh, always happy to talk to you. It's been a couple of weeks. I miss you. Likewise. Uh, so here's what we need to talk about today, and it's a public health crisis, and it's getting worse. It's the public health crisis of gun violence, and it's getting worse for a very simple reason. We have too many guns <laughs> and not nearly enough restrictions, so-called gun control. By the way, I am a gun owner. I'm an Army veteran, and I was a pretty good shot back in the day. But like two-thirds of all Americans, I would welcome stricter gun safety rules to save lives. But here we are in 2022, witnessing 45,000 Americans dying from gun violence each year. That's more Americans than those killed in car accidents, and that's for the first time in our history. Also, when you compare our 45,000 gun deaths to any other civilized country on earth, it makes me almost want to cry. Contrast our 45,000 to far fewer than 1,000 in Canada or Germany, or a mere 168 people in the UK, and to one person in Japan. <laughs> yes, Japan, that's a country of 125 million people, and it had one single gun death last year. And it's getting worse here. Our obscene gun deaths are up 43% in 10 years. Plus now, 8 in 10 murders involve guns. And that's up 40, I'm sorry, that's up 75% in 10 years. Also, over half of our suicides involve guns. And that includes a rising number of women because guns are awfully efficient at killing people. And guns cause half the deaths of young men in this country. And perhaps scariest of all, America's mass shootings with three or more victims have doubled in 10 years. To two mass shootings in this country, not each month, not each week, but two each day. The massacre of the innocents at the school in Evaldi, Texas. And that supermarket in Buffalo, New York, and the synagogue near Pittsburgh, they, they get massive news coverage, and they deserve it. But most of our mass shootings have become so commonplace that they hardly get noticed at all. I checked out a day. This is perfectly at random. And I'll ask you if you heard about any of these. Did any of these ring a bell? Because on that random day, there were three shootings in America Six dead and 19 shot at a Bar Harbor, Michigan liquor store. Ten wounded and two shots into a police cruiser at a Charleston block party. Two dead at a Philadelphia party, a 21-year-old woman and a 16-year-old girl. Eight dead, 29 wounded in three mass shootings. And I'm guessing you didn't hear about any of them in one random day in America. So I'll ask you, Jill. I mean, you track the news pretty closely. Do any of those any of those shootings ring a bell with you? Yeah, they 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 they. I I am familiar with them. Those specific those specific ones. Yeah, you heard about those. Yeah, sure. Because because it, when 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 something is being talked about, you hear about them. Yeah. When it's not being well, talked about, you don't hear about them. Well, good for you. I don't think they get as much attention as they should, uh, but there's so many of them it just uh, just washes over people. Right. But the other... so here's something. Here's something I hate to have to say. By the time I finish this broadcast, at least one person will die from gun violence in this country. That's 124 more Americans will die of gun violence today. Fact is. Much of this carnage could be stopped. We know what works against gun violence. Gun control. Year after year, the highest gun deaths 
are in the country's 25 or so states with the weakest gun control laws or no control at all. States where you can carry a concealed gun without a license or any training. States like Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, Wyoming, I could go on. And of course, Texas. Gun deaths in those states are five times higher than in states with stricter gun safety laws, like requiring licenses to own a gun, reinforcing waiting periods to check out people before they can buy a gun, red flag laws to block the mentally disturbed from getting their hands on a trigger, and bans on the sale of military assault rifles that so many mass shooters have used and will continue to use as long as they're on the market. But so far, only seven states, and then thank goodness it includes Connecticut, New York, Massachusetts, and New Jersey, have bans on military assault rifles. Now, those gun controls, without doubt, save lives. For example, Connecticut averages around 800 gun deaths a year. That's 800 too many. But compare that to, say, tiny Mississippi. It has 3,000 gun deaths a year. And then there's Texas with a sickening 12,000 gun deaths a year, and they're loosening gun constrictions as we speak. But here's the dilemma. As more guns actually lead to more gun violence, hundreds of millions of Americans have come to believe they need guns to protect themselves. That amounts to a grim, self-fulfilling prophecy. In this upside-down world, gun control laws generate more gun sales. That should be no surprise, as fear-mongers like Tucker Carlson and his Fox colleagues and others tell lies night after night about how the tamest gun safety effort, like Connecticut's Chris Murphy's modest federal law, is really a first big step for the government to take away all your guns. That's rubbish. But far too many people believe it. Go out and buy more guns before it's too late. And then vote in Republican lawmakers who stand in the way of even the most reasonable reforms. And to make matters worse, Effective 100-year-old gun control restrictions are being struck down by our radical Supreme Court that has simply lost its mind. I'll tell you more about this court and its trumped-up Second Amendment claims in a future broadcast. But meanwhile, the fact is the public has far more common sense about guns. Fully 70 to 90 percent of us actually support universal background checks before people can buy a gun requiring licenses and training to carry a gun, closing the private sale loophole that allows more than 60% of those buyers in private sales to get guns, even though they could not pass a background check, and banning the sale of military-style rifles that the mass shooters, as young as 18, are using to kill innocent people in our stores, in our schools, in our churches, in our synagogues, where are we safe? But I'm afraid we won't be safer until the lawmakers blocking sensible gun control get voted out of office. So, Jill, that's the one thing that I think could really put a dent in this gun violence in this country, voting out the lawmakers who are blocking controls. Can you think of anything else that could work? Personally? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of kindness. Uh, and the reason that I will say that is uh, you when, when, back in the day when you were a young cub reporter, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember this vividly, not you're being a cub reporter, but back in the day, I, I would say mid-80s, mid-80s, um, there was some, somebody wrote a, a pretty cool piece about a young kid uh, in a, 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 less, a less than uh, privileged environment. Who had picked up, you know, a gun and shot his somebody, and was standing there essentially waiting for the guy to get up again, because mm. that's what they saw in the movies. Yeah, 
And I don't remember, I don't know whether that's apocryphal, but I, it was, what I don't think it was. I think it was basically the point, I don't need to elaborate, you can, you can take it from there. But mm-hmm. rather than encouraging an understanding, we're going back, what now, 40 some odd years? I, yeah. I, I can't even count it so long. Um, rather than encouraging an understanding and a connection um, between the... Um, Let's just call them action, but we could call them violent too. You, you know, people have now been literally brazed in um, violence. Yeah. So I well, just think that that's got well, to be I, in considered. Our, in our public in, in the best of our public schools, uh, they teach anger management, um, and kids learn not to not to resolve things with their fists and, and stuff like that. I mean, I <laughs> I was in too many fist fights. I was, uh, you know, I was an ornament in my principal's office <laughs> when, I was in, when I was in the third grade. Um, but my grandsons don't do anything like that uh, at all. But the problem is, if you have a gun and you're angry, it's not uh, a good combination. You get your hands on a gun and you're angry, bad things happen. If a gun's around, um, then you're just inviting violence. So I look. I, I think the best thing we can do in the meantime, with people thinking about how they should vote these lawmakers out of office, is just to confront the fear about. The fact that I need a gun to protect yourself, you gotta, you gotta confront it, and you gotta confront it logically, and with the facts, and no big uh, argument. You just truly be try to be as reasonable as you can, because someone might say to you, and I'm sure they have, you know, guns don't kill people, people do. Well, if someone says that, you can say, I agree, guns don't fire themselves. Somebody pulls the trigger. That's why we need to regulate who gets to buy guns. And then we need to train them so they treat their deadly weapons with respect and to keep them out of the hands of others who might hurt themselves or hurt others. And that includes their children. Someone might say to you, and I'm sure they do, a good guy with a gun is the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun. That's become such a cliche. And then they say, look at that Indiana Mall, you know, where that guy, Good Samaritan, stepped forward in 15 seconds to stop that mass shooter. Uh, gee, that just happened last week. Happens all the time. You can say, good for that Good Samaritan. But that was lucky. In a study of 433 recent active shootings, only 12 ordinary people stepped in and stopped the attacker. Someone say, yeah, but that's we just need more guns then. And then you say, okay, in at least three cases, the police mistook the good guy for an armed bad guy, and they shot him dead. And you can also add, you know, if those lawmakers were talking about a good guy with a bad gun, a gun, good guy with a gun, if they really were sincere about that, wouldn't they be jumping up and down, requiring the good guys to get as much extensive training that they possibly could? So if they ever ended up engaging a shooter, they'd do it right and not end up being one of the victims. You'd think. You'd think. And someone might simply say to you, my gun keeps me safe. To which you can say, This country has 440 million guns, meaning every 100 Americans own an average of 120 guns. If guns kept us safe, America would be the safest country in the world, not what we truly are today, a frightening country with the most gun violence in the world. And yes, it's getting worse. Thank you, Frank, the healthcare detective and health correspondent for Parade. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcaredetective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also, look for his book, Your Best Healthcare Now, available online, in-store, and on my desk. <laughs> 